Important plan. The crew aboard the Space Shuttle Discovery is minutes away now from its second satellite rescue mission of the week. It's Wednesday, November 14th, and this is Daybreak. Good morning, I'm Patrick Greenlaw. And I'm Pat Harvey. Good morning. Well, the going is expected to be easier this morning when the astronauts go after the West Star 6 satellite now stranded in space. CNN's Charles Crawford is here with us. He has the story. Charles? Good morning. The uh, shuttle Discovery is just about ready to make the final maneuver to park the spacecraft just 35 feet away from the wayward satellite West Star. We have videotape of the transmitted about 30 minutes ago, and if you watch closely, there's the rocket. Uh, you'll see the rocket burn at the right of your screen, there it was. And that was one of the maneuvers, there it is again. One of the maneuvers by uh, Commander Rick Hout to rendezvous the communications satellite. These are astronauts Dale Gardner and Joseph Allen going through their pre-breathing. That's where they pre-breathe 100% oxygen to reduce the nitrogen in the bloodstream so they won't uh, have any risk of getting the bends when they depressurize. They will leave the airlock, of, uh, which is right at the bottom of your screen. They'll go out through that airlock and into the cargo bay in about 10 minutes from now to begin the six-hour spacewalk. The shuttle Discovery is ready right now. There's the rocket firing at the, uh, at the rear of the, on the right of your screen. Last maneuvers to uh, rendezvous with the uh, satellite West Star 6. Videotape, they are out in that cargo bay now, and in about uh, 10 minutes Pilot from now. Dave Walker now uh, closing the airlock hatch. In about 10 minutes from now, Alan will uh, West Star 6 satellite you're looking at. Just above the uh, cargo bay. Yeah, I guess I'm going to wait too. And you're listening to the voices of uh, Joe Allen and Dale okay, Gardner. The Stinger flight check uh, referred to there, there's the Stinger, that ring uh, affair that is, will be attached, is attached to the uh, front of Dale well, Gardner's uh, right spacesuit. That's the device that will be used to, to lock up and, uh, run, and rendezvous with West Star 6. What do you think of your uh, uh, portable foot restraint? Do you want to tilt it slightly after? It's pointing basically straight up. Okay, guys, we got a second to review here. That's good, Joe. Okay. First of all, Joe, let me get a status from you. And, uh, Derek, you want to give me another big four Houston can listen to both of you now. Roger. I'm going to run down them all. Uh, just the big four Okay, again. Roger. 57, 620, uh, 87% power, 91% 02, 4.4. .4. Oh, that's all, Joe. And that's all. Okay. The uh, okay, astronauts reading off the uh, consumables, their oxygen and their uh, uh, fuel left in their manned maneuvering units and in their spacesuits. 87% power, 91% O2. Okay, Gardner, you're going to be ready to go in about 15 minutes. The protruding uh, uh, probe there at the bottom, or it's actually the top of West Star 6, will be the, should be the Omni antenna that uh, Joe Allen will grasp hold of. Okay, now, Joseph. Yes, sir. As soon as he takes off on his, uh, on his Stinger flight check, he's going to take off on his Stinger flight check. And we have on the phone with us uh, in Houston the chief of uh, extravehicular activity, that's the spacewalking training, Ray DeLosa. Good morning, Ray. Good morning. How are you today? Just fine. Everything appears to be going right on schedule. Yeah, he's ready to go. Uh, he's uh, supposed to fly over in about 13 minutes. He has been around about 13 minutes and then he'll start flying over to the spacecraft. Again, we're looking at uh, Dale Gardner, who will be doing the flyover in his jet pack. And that affair at the top of your screen, the ring device, is the, uh, what's called the Stinger. That will be used. It's got about a six-foot-long probe on it. And it will be used to lock onto the 
rocket end of the uh, rocket spent rocket casing of the uh, satellite West Star. Uh, perhaps you can tell us uh, something about how that lockup is made, Ray. Okay, the stinger is uh, just like a, a molly boat. It's got three fingers on the end that uh, once the probe is inserted in the back end of the nozzle, the instrument uh, will release the, the tip, the front end tip of it. The cover will come off and uh, release three fingers and spring out, grab the inside of the nozzle. After he's done that, as a ratchet device, you will ratchet in the uh, stinger probe, tighten that ring, the uh, three-foot ring, will then tighten on the catch fitting uh, spacecraft, tighten it down just like you would a molly ball. Ray, we, uh, we have a bad telephone line connection with you, I think, so we're going to probably hang up on you, and we'll call you back and see if we can't get a better line. Okay. the world for your life, Nat, Dale. Think about that. But I'm holding on. I would rather have Rick Fly be home, frankly. <laughs> What's your timer say there, David? 15 seconds. Oh, jeez. Well, we don't have to do it to the second. Here we go. Okay, I'm going to do the CEA powers on. Okay, hang on. I'll follow you through. Okay, I'm going to start out norm. You're watching the last and final uh, checkouts of the man maneuvering unit or the jet okay, pack. I'm going to go to Sad Stab. It flies in norm. No doubt about that. And a checkout of that Stinger device on the front of uh, Dale Gardner's spacesuit. The way you can tell the astronauts apart, well, at this point, of course, it's, it's easy to tell them apart because one's wearing the jet pack, but without that jet pack, uh, you'll see a ring around the thigh. Okay, Joseph, I see you working the MFR. That's good. Of uh, EVA 1, who is Joseph Allen. And the gardener does not have that uh, red stripe around his close to the leg mind. of his spacesuit. I'm watching both. Okay, down your uh, left side is getting fairly close to the arm. I still got some room. Okay, I'm coming back into the bay. I'm going to use one of the rollers up to the target. Here I go. This, of course, is the second uh, wayward satellite that the crew of Discovery is attempting to retrieve. They, re they successfully managed to uh, retrieve Palapa two days ago. And uh, through an alternate or a backup uh, method, hand-holding it, they were able to berth that satellite and secure it in the cargo bay. The problem on Monday was they found that there was an unforeseen obstacle at the uh, top of the uh, satellite, and it, which prohibited them from installing an A-frame, which was a specially constructed uh, structure, to hold uh, the satellite with the remote-controlled arm. Back up just a the backup procedure was that Joe Allen ended up uh, holding that 1,500-pound satellite for about two hours while Gardner fastened the birthing okay, ring to, back to, my right. to the bottom of the satellite, and it was hand-delivered to the cargo bed. Uh, you're also getting pretty close to the arm. Yeah, really? Hey, I'll move over this way, then. How's that? Right. Okay. These two satellites will be returned to Earth and refurbished, and the insurers hope to uh, resell them. Okay, I'm going to head down to the NFR to grab a hold. Okay, that sounds good. 
Charles, is the configuration of this satellite about the same as the Palapa, about seven feet in diameter, about the same way? It's almost identical to Palapa. It's seven feet uh, across, about nine feet high, 21 feet in uh, circumference, weighs about 1,200 pounds on Earth. They're both built by Hughes. Uh, the West Star belonged to Western Union and the Palapa belonged to the Indonesian government. They've been since reimbursed for their loss. We're going to lose something here, too. The uh, vertical affair was the pro, it was the antenna probe, I believe, on the uh, top of the West Star satellite. You're looking at various uh, shots from cameras around the uh, cargo bay. This is uh, Dale Gardner in his uh, manned jet pack, backpack, and uh, preparing to uh, fly over to West Star. The uh, device or the apparatus, the ringer apparatus at the top right hand of your screen was the so-called stinger that's fastened to the front of the spacesuit. And we have on the phone with us uh, Ray Deloso, the chief of uh, spacewalk training in Houston. Ray, uh, perhaps while we're not listening to the, the uh, astronauts who they're not transmitting right now, we can, you can describe for us this uh, retrieval operation. Okay, the uh, sail uh, is right now waiting for sunrise, which is about, about another four minutes to go before he'll actually translate over to the spacecraft and start his docking maneuver. Uh, the stinger, the device on the end, which we call the stinger, uh, has a long probe on it, about five or six feet long, and it's very similar to a molly bolt. Uh, he will fly up to the spacecraft, uh, insert the uh, stinger probe into the, uh, the nozzle, the engine nozzle of the uh, West Star. Once it's inserted in, he will release a trigger, which will allow three fingers to release and expand out. They're spring-loaded, and then once those fingers are released, uh, where it's just like a molly bolt, he will then ratchet in the probe until he tightens down onto the ring of the spacecraft and gets a rigidized attachment. Once he's uh, attached, then he will bring the satellite over to the orbiter where uh, Joe Allen on the manipulator foot restraint on the end of the arm will then uh, grab the satellite. Got about another uh, three minutes and he should be ready to start moving out to the West Star. Okay, Ray, thank you for that description. And uh, again, we're looking at Dale Gardner, who in our, from our perspective is upside down. From his perspective, it doesn't make any difference which position he's in because you're weightless in space. And uh, if you'll recall Monday's retrieval where Joe Allen appeared to be holding like uh, Atlas, the world over his head, a nine foot, 1200 uh, pound satellite for two hours. He really wasn't holding anything. He was simply resting and, and his hands against it and keeping it stable. Uh, so even though the, these satellites weigh uh, well over a thousand pounds on Earth, they weigh nothing. They do have mass, so they have to be very careful in space as to what kind of uh, forces are applied to the uh, satellite because if you if you impart a, a force to the satellite you it then establishes momentum and that satellite will just keep going uh, with the risk of course if it's too much momentum they could lose it or send it tumbling which would create a, a serious problem for uh, making the rendezvous and successfully attaching that stinger probe which is on the front of uh, Dale Gardner's suit We should explain that we've uh, temporarily, and I am sure that that's a situation, lost uh, commu air to ground communications or the communications between the... Uh, there we go, we've got it now. Now we'll listen to the astronauts as they go through this final checkout procedure of the uh, back jet backpack and the uh, stinger device. All right. Yeah, it's going to tilt back towards the tail a little bit now, isn't it? As Ray Deloso pointed out of uh, Houston, uh, they do wait until sunrise before they will fly over to uh, West Star 6. Just I, I assume to make it a little easier to watch what you're doing when the, uh, the, he moves that stinger into the uh, rocket nozzle of West Star 6. This morning's retrieval in some ways is similar. Let's see, we can run through that little checklist we have to do before we head back. We're going through the checklist now. Okay, we're 
One last check of the props. Gardner is pulling down his sun visor because he'd probably be looking directly into the sun when he makes this rendezvous with the with the satellite, as was uh, Joe Allen on Monday. Look at the cities go by, Dale. Look at that. Look at the cities. What landmass are we over? Probably Mexico. Yeah. They're seeing roughly the same view that the uh, out there, Joe. the two saw on Monday during the retrieval of uh, Palapa. The cities underneath them over Mexico now. So within just a few minutes, we should see uh, Dale Gardner fire the tiny thrusters on that man maneuvering unit and begin the flyover about 35 feet from the cargo bay to West R6, which will be the beginning of the what they hope to be a second successful retrieval of two $35 million satellites that were lost in space when they failed to reach proper orbit last February. Ground controllers had managed to uh, bring them down to about 225. Okay, check and see. Either on. There's the rotating West Star they are. six satellite. Stay up. Just 35 feet stay above stay the cargo up. bay. That's Joseph Allen. Hey, you're fairly close to the floor above yet, Dale. We made the retrieval so, uh, on Monday of Palapa. And that's so, of course, the satellite's a little bit too near. You're clear of me, Dale. You're fine. That's the Stinger affair at the front of the spacesuit of Dale Gardner. Gardner now going after West Star. You have got your visor, Dale, right? He's on his way. Down. Thank you. You need to go towards your feet just a little bit. And to your left just a little bit. Uh, why is that? Because you're pretty close to the forward bulkhead. Forward bulkhead? And moving to, to the port. Yeah, you're okay. Okay. It's towards your feet a little bit. Do you see the end of picture on the arm? Yeah, I got it all in view, Dave. I'm going to fly right between them here. Okay. We'll keep you clear on, the, on your right. Okay, I can see the arm on my right, so I can stay clear of it. No problem. Okay. This almost looks like something out of a uh, space uh, 2001, doesn't it? I was going to say. Okay, you've got about three feet. 
No more than that with the uh, end defector down. Yeah, I passed it. Okay, I can't tell that so much. Yeah, I waited until it was past my uh, right 3 o'clock and uh, gave it a few potatoes and that, that made my maneuver. So Okay, it is just outside your field of view. You should see it at your left eye peripherally here shortly. The end effector? Yep. Oh, I'm uh, 12 feet behind it. Okay. That's the shuttle's uh, remote-controlled really arm at the right of your well, screen. Okay. That eye looks real nice. No problem. Okay. Give me another prop check here before you start docking. Okay, I'm uh, 19 and 18. Okay. And based on that, think I got enough? Yep, in your third dock. Here's the measure. Watch out for the sun. Yeah, if it gets in my eyes, I'm going to do a 180 roll. It would appear as if uh, Gardner has a much better position in relationship to the sun for this docking maneuver. On Monday, Joseph Allen ended Gardner up looking... Will do a I hear you. Joseph Allen closing now with the Stinger affair at the front of his spacesuit. An audible excl exclamation in mission control with this uh, magnificent shot. That's coming up towards your chest. Oh yeah, I see what you're talking about. We should remark here that your picture is in black and white at this point. Oh, good. Now the orbiter is blocking the sun. Okay, don't hesitate to advise you. He's looking good. He's lining up now. The shuttle. And the satellite and uh, Dale Gardner are all moving at 17,500 miles an hour. Looks like about a tenth. reporting he has a lock on the satellite. This probe at the top end of the satellite will be what Allen will grab a hold of once the rotation has been stopped and uh, Gardner flies that satellite over to the cargo bay.
Thank you, Nick. And there's some good news to report in the day, Spacewalk, Charles Crawford. There is indeed. And uh, the two astronauts who are spacewalking right now are about two and a half hours into their spacewalk. I believe we've got live pictures from the uh, shuttle Discovery. 10 or 15 degrees swing, and that's quite acceptable right now. Well, now, see, I, it swung, I think. Did, did I put brakes on? She stopped just momentarily, and it caused about a 15 degree swing. It's just information. Okay. Uh -huh. You're looking at the uh, Westar 6 satellite at the top of your screen being lowered into the cargo bay. <coughs> and that's the Palapa satellite that was uh, retrieved on Monday. She's going to be working very slowly and gently. It's going to take a while, but we got all the time in the world. Yeah, we got a lot of time now. You're listening to the voices of mission specialists Joe Allen and Dale Gardner. As they work in the cargo bay, the next procedure will be for Gardner to uh, stow his uh, backpack, which we believe that's already been done. And you have about another foot to go towards the cabin. They're lined up right now out here, here over my right shoulder. In fact, uh, they are running an out full hour ahead of schedule. Gardner all has already put himself in the manned foot restraint along the edge of the cargo bay. And you can see that the uh, West Star 6 is being lowered toward him. He will install a berthing ring. The same way he did uh, on Palapa. Okay, Anna, that's good. You can stop the X. Now bring it down towards me. <clears throat> you can stop the X. He uh, was referring to the X axis. It's an X and Y axis to the vehicle. Hey, Dale, you're about three feet now, maybe, maybe three and a half. I bet you. I can see that pretty well from here. Okay. I'll keep calling your distance in. Nick, we're right, almost right in the cabin on this forward pallet. Yes, sir. is installing a cover over the rocket nozzle to keep any debris inside that spent rocket casing from coming out and getting into the cargo bay. They, of course, want as little debris in that cargo bay as possible when they make the re-entry to Earth on Friday. Uh, Houston Discovery, you got status a minute ago. Everything was fine. This is referred okay, to as the shower cap. And it's simply a cloth affair that uh, attaches to the rocket nozzle. Go push it down towards me. It's coming up away from me. Okay? And it needs to come. Well, I won't uh, worry about left and right right now. No, I'm moving up left and right, right on purpose, Dave, so. Is that in that board? You're going down more, Dale. Oh, okay. Again, we should remind you that Joe Allen is standing. We're working together on it. Not only talk, but it's starting to get out of here. Yeah, all the, all the pitch and the joint is you know, Joe is me kind of moving around to make okay. my job easier. So okay, I'm not going to do it. I'm just going to try to keep it from coming back up. Okay. Joe Allen is standing on the uh, cherry picker robot arm, uh, holding on to the Omni antenna at the top of the satellite. And that's why it's uh, moving around, because it, it, there's no way to keep it absolutely stable. This is a similar but not identical procedure of the technique they used to recover and stow the uh, Palapa satellite on Monday. This satellite weighs about 1,200 pounds on Earth, but of course it weighs nothing in the zero gravity of space. It does, however, have mass, so anytime momentum is imparted to the uh, communication satellite, it will move and then you have to slow it down again. There's always the risk if you push too hard, it might get away from you. And, of course, they want to be extremely careful not to hit any part of the uh, cargo bay of the shuttle. Okay. 
actually you only have to impart just ounces of pressure in order to move this gigantic piece of uh, apparatus, which is seven feet tall, uh, about nine feet tall, seven feet across. Now there was some damage done to the solar cells on Palapa because the uh, satellite faced the sun for such a long period during its recovery on Monday. And that is a possibility uh, that it also will damage some solar cells on this spacecraft, on this uh, communication satellite while they recover it. However, Constellation Control, Dale Gardner working to complete the attachment of the uh, nozzle cover. Sir, did you have any trouble with those questions? No, I'm doing OK. These satellites are worth $35 million new. Can you look down at your feet while you're doing this and see uh, what the top of the satellite is doing with your feet? Yeah. OK, good. Uh, so I can maneuver it uh, with that as a reference, but that's the only reference I got, David. OK, that's a good reference. Uh, just let Dale put it where he wants it for now. Here's the pivot point, Joe. You just, yeah, let me pick it yard. Now you can see Joseph Allen standing at the end of the robot arm, holding on. Arm, and we can see uh, Joe Allen on the end of the arm, holding the top of the satellite. I'd like to see him right now. If we could, if we could stiffen up the pivot handle. Hey, but Dave, see, I could, I could put it wherever I want, so it's very comfortable here. Pivot hand's not moving. Uh, an inch. Okay, I'm letting go, Joe. The cover's on. Okay, I'm, I'm got it. With two, two hands down, so okay. And the only thing that Alan is holding okay, on to is the uh, Omni antenna, about a three foot long probe at the uh, top end of the West R6. Good morning, textbook perfect picture we, is the best way to describe what's going on in space right now. These are live pictures from the shuttle Discovery, from the uh, robot arm, the elbow camera, looking down into the cargo bay where mission specialist Joe Allen is holding on to the top of the satellite uh, West Star. lights are on on the uh, point straight up. And Dale Gardner is working below in the cargo bay. He's on a man foot restraint, which holds his feet into position, makes it a lot, of, a lot easier to work in space. And Joe Allen is at a man foot restraint on the end of the robot arm. I didn't want you to run the battery down, for God's sakes. An eagle like mine could do batteries. Well, I know, but... A little conversation about your uh, navigation lights are on, and we don't want to run the battery down. That's Joe Allen at the top end of West R6. Hand holding a, what would weigh 1,200 pounds here on Earth. Of course, it weighs nothing in space, but it does have mass, so he's got to be careful of any pressures. Specialist Joe Allen now hanging the uh, hanging onto the end of the satellite there to stabilize it. Just a bare ounce of pressure could start that satellite rotating or moving in. Uh, an unwanted direction. This is not a fatiguing uh, operation for Alan. It might, you might say, how can this man for two hours hold his arms either above his head or out and hang on like that? A little more, I forgot how tall Dale is. Oh, yeah. When he gets to that TFI, I don't want him to bump into the bottom of the satellite. But if you keep in mind that it is weightless, zero gravity in space, uh, he's just resting out there. Gardner's the one who does. After we heard a couple minutes ago here in the uh, flight control room that uh, flight controllers uh, amused that uh, Alan has his camera with him and expected him. Uh, he is known as a uh, good amateur photographer and uh, have expected him to ask uh, Gardner to hold the satellite while he got a couple of snapshots. Very helpful. The nozzle uh, shower curtain or shower cap pretty well now, and so we're going to take a couple pictures of it while you're conveniently located. Okay. The shower cap refers to the. Uh... Want me to rock it more to you? No, that's okay. I'll, I'll tell you when if we do. Okay. 
refers to the cover that uh, Gardner has installed over the rocket nozzle to keep any debris from that ro spent rocket engine. Well, Dallas, is there anything you'd like to change about that TFR uh, angle now the time? From getting into the cargo uh, bay. I made a little bit. I need to be tightened up a little bit, too. Okay. Yeah, I didn't want to make it too tight. Now, last you had to redo it yourself. Oh, you did right. You did exactly right. In a, few, in a few minutes, Gardner will begin installing the berthing ring on the uh, bottom end of that satellite in preparation for securing the entire affair to the deck of the cargo bay for its return to Earth on Friday. This whole uh, salvaging procedure and mission is, of course, saving the, the insurers who own these satellites now millions of dollars. They hope that's the palapa at the right side of your picture that was recovered on Monday. They hope to refurbish them and resell them as the first used satellites in space. I should qualify that. They call them flight tested instead of used. And that's the stinger on your right side of your picture, the uh, circular affair. That's the device that was attached to the front of the spacesuit and was used to dock with the uh, satellite and bring it back to the cargo bay. That framework uh, has, uh, we understand, 10 latching claws. Joel, continuing to hold the West Star by its antenna as he stands on the end of the uh, mechanical arm. That will secure the uh, birthing ring. Passing over uh, the uh, coast of Baja, California now. The sun just coming up on the Earth below. Our orbiter is already in sunlight. And again, that's the robot arm on the right bottom portion of your picture, extending out and... Uh, managing to uh, hang on carefully to the satellite, uh, not moving too fast in any direction so that uh, it doesn't build up any momentum. They're uh, manhandling the satellite much as they did uh, on uh, the recovery of Palapa two days ago, this time slightly different <coughs> techniques with Alan on the end of the mechanical arm rather than uh, near the uh, side of the orbiter's payload bay. It reported that it's gone much w better uh, today this uh, this way, and they're uh, about an hour ahead of the timeline as laid out for them yesterday. The shuttle is passing over uh, the west coast of Mexico now from the Pacific. Well, before you finish, with the forward stinger in there, uh, you may want to think about tilting that thing a little bit more towards the starboard wing to get yourself up a little further out of the bay than you might ordinarily like to work. If you can do that and still reach the uh, adapter. Uh, I don't think I can do that. Good morning and welcome to Day Watch. I'm Bob Kane. And I'm Marianne Laughlin. Joining us once again for a look at space shuttle coverage and an ongoing mission by the Shuttle Discovery, our science correspondent, Charles Crawford. Good morning, Charles. And it's living up to all it was promised to be. We have some live pictures, so let's go right to the uh, Shuttle Discovery now and see what's going on. This is... Uh, You're looking from the uh, elbow camera of the remote-controlled arm. Joe Allen is at the top holding the satellite over the cargo bay as Dale Gardner prepares to uh, attach a berthing collar, a berthing ring to the uh, rocket nozzle on the bottom end of the satellite Westar 6. The astronauts have been in, in their spacewalk now about three hours, just under three hours. Three of them. Two are spoken and one looks like it's active. 
And while they uh, prepare to install that birthing ring, perhaps we can go back and show you what happened earlier this morning when uh, Dale Gardner flew out of the cargo bay and uh, made the recovery and the, and the uh, successful docking. That's West Star 6, six rotating. Yeah, I won't do my yaw until I see I clear the end vector. And you're listening to Dale Gardner yeah, describe. You can start working your uh, flip bar stuff. Passing the, ro the robot arm, that's the end of the robot arm on the right, right side of your screen. Real slow with it. There you go. Looks like about a tenth. The docking took place over Mexico this morning. Call when he's in, Joe. I think he's starting penetration. Looking good, Dale. Going for a toggle. Hey, toggle, I got it. Cycle John Town. Hey, cycle, it's like even a good knock. Hey, cycle on gyro power. It's off and back on. Start the truck. Go speed disc. So, yes, it's just like you said. You're done good, Dr. J. Just like you said, partner. So you just saw Dale Gardner make a successful docking, and then he brought the uh, flew the satellite back to a position over the cargo bay, where Joe Allen, standing on the end of the robot arm, grasped the satellite by the Omni antenna, a three-foot-long antenna, and that's what he's holding it by now, holding it steady over the cargo bay. Joe Allen asking for directions to uh, allow him to go ahead with putting on the birthing ring. That'll be a. Okay, I understand you have, uh, you have hold of it. I don't think you have hold of it. Well, when you tell me you're ready, then I'll grab it. Okay, we're waiting on you to grab it. We'll release the latch. Okay, I'm ready for the numbers two and three. Perhaps go ahead, CBS. Well, I think it's fair to say that uh, we weren't totally certain until we were back uh, in the airlock after the spacecraft, the satellite, had been safely burst. And uh, up until that time, I think it's safe to say we weren't overconfident. Uh, but we nonetheless were confident that we would be able to do it. And uh, the results speak for themselves. We're both pleased and, and happy and perhaps a bit lucky.